So one of our viewers alerted us of this new version of a Neo Glow and she was wondering what's the difference between the original one and this one. And on the website, the new one looks completely different. So of course I had to buy it right away and today we're going to compare it. So I'm going to apply this original one on my left hand and the new one on my right hand. I'm going to show you how the polish looks in a inside indoor light and how it looks outside and then we are quickly are going to talk about the ingredients and what the difference are ingredients wise if you are interested okay so first of all the brushes i was afraid that the brush is going to be different but they seem very very similar and i don't know about you but the new packaging someone said that it looks more cheap and I, I think i like the new packaging so this obviously lid comes off and it has like a nice silver band. Oh, I like it. Let's polish my nails. So the Dior brush is really, really good. It's very soft, which helps. It's nice and round, as you can see. And the Dior Nail Glow is quite thin when it's brand new. So what I actually do is, you know what? I'll show you. Um, at the end of this video, I'm going to include a very quick video, the trick that I use, so I don't waste any of the near of the Art Nail Glow. So the other one, the new one seems a bit thicker, which is, I would rather have a thinner version. So I know it looks just like a clear nail polish. It has just a hint of pink but it brightens the nails a little bit and what i really do like about this product in particular it has that beautiful glow that brightens the nails but the glow is very very gentle and my clients like this a lot of my clients don't like the very bright blue nails so we'll see how they compare if the new one is as gentle. And let's time the drying time. Okay, at one minute, it's tacky. It dries pretty quick. I have to say for my clients when I'm using this, it takes like two minutes for this to, to dry. And at two minutes, I start applying the oil and then I do a head massage. Okay, two minutes dry. Time for the new one. It does feel a little bit thicker. It doesn't feel thick, but it is thicker than the original one. And it might take a little bit longer to dry. By the way, can you see how these nails are, the ends are wider than these? So I had shellac on this hand and I wore it for a week. And then I had no nail polish on this hand for the last few days. So there goes the theory where um, people say that shellac or polish protects the nails from water because it doesn't, it actually does the opposite. A nail polish raises moisture level in the nail and shellac as well. All of these products are semi-occlusive. So they, they, the water evaporates from the the, the nail bed up the nail plate. So the polish slows down that evaporation and it's, it's porous, so it lets the water soak in as well. I guess it's porous because otherwise you wouldn't be able to remove it with, um, with acetone. Let's see how this, actually this is pretty dry. Huh. Okay, one minute, this is pretty dry. So let's wait two minutes. So what happens is, you see how clear that nail is, kind of? And this had shellac as well. And these ones, these four didn't. So when there was no product on the nails, the nails were actually drier. 
And this is why I recommend when people have issues with their toenails or they have uh, some separation or possibly chances of bacterial infection, it's better to take polish off, keep the nails as short as possible because the the additional moisture, too much moisture in the nail is not good. I know people like that word moisturizing and they think moisture solves everything, but that's not the case when it comes to the nails. Actually, even for the skin, too much moisture is not good either. There has to be a balance and the nails are actually not naturally that moist. They're actually pretty dry. So the additional moisture actually swells up the nail, which can actually eventually cause damage. So, okay, it's two minutes of me talking. This is dry. So, uh -huh, this actually dries a little bit faster. So let's see how these nails look outside. And now let's look at the ingredients list and see if there was any differences in the formula of the, of the nail polish. After this, we will look and I'll show you how the product lasted on my nails and how it looked after a week. So one thing, um, I noticed that the solvents are switched. So basically in the old one, so this is the old one and this is the new one. So the solvents are switched. So this one has more of the ethyl acetate and this one has more of the button acetate. Doesn't make a big difference, I guess. Uh, they both have nitrocellulose. By the way, these are two. These two are solvents. Nitrocellulose, which is a film-forming ingredient, so that's the plastic that basically stays behind once the solvents evaporate. The fourth ingredient is the adipic acid neop neopentyl glyco. Blah blah blah. I don't know how to pronounce it. Which is also a film-forming. They both have that as a fourth ingredient. And this one is a plasticizer. It has, um, this polish has it as well. Uh, isopropyl alcohol, solvent, solvent, same thing. Acrylate copolymer, which is, which is a film forming. It makes the product a little bit thicker. And this one has uh, cellulose acetate uh, as a film forming instead of the acrylate copolymer. This one has benzophenone 3 which is a sunscreen, but it really prevents the color from fading and discoloration. This one doesn't have it. Okay, uh, many polishes don't have it. So by the way, the benzophenone, it's another slightly con controversial ingredient. The sunscreens are kind of controversial. There are a lot of people with a lot of concerns. Personally, I'm not uh, concerned whatsoever. It's just that the products that don't have it, it they might fade quicker so the you have to be very careful with keeping this away from the light so if you have the bottle keep it in the keep it in the drawer because one time i kept the original formula with even the sunscreen outside and the light faded it to a completely clear nail polish it was still brightening when you went outside you could still see that the nails were brighter but it just wasn't um, the, the pink was gone as i'm editing this video i'm thinking that maybe i didn't make uh, one thing clear about these controversial ingredients so i just want to mention it so i mentioned that they are controversial because when you google it when you when you look it up you will probably come across all this type of information because it's all over the internet one thing that i really appreciate about dior is the fact they don't fear monger and they call their polish for what it is a beautiful decoration for your nails so this is what they say about dior nail glow Dior Nail Glow is a beautifying nail polish with a formula that revives the nail's natural color. The nails are lightly tinted from the first application. Once this nail care product, so not some cure for anything, but nail care product is applied, the nails are radiant and protected day after day. The French manicure effect is immediate. The shiny finish and rounded nail effect are spectacular. I absolutely love this. So going back to the controversial ingredients. So one of the most important things is to remember that when it comes to chemicals, so pretty much anything, well, anything that we can touch is the amount of exposure, the length of the exposure and the root of the exposure. So how something enters our body. So anything, just think about it. Anything can be linked to something bad, which doesn't mean that it causes something bad. So for example, people drown 
unfortunately, every year. So all the drownings are linked to water. So water can kill. But that doesn't mean that any water exposure is dangerous and that we should ban water. So drinking water obviously is healthy. I mean, not too much because that can kill you too. <laughs> Washing your skin with water is okay. But inhaling a lot of water obviously is not. Another example, sugar is linked to diabetes. But that doesn't mean that when you put sugar scrub on your skin, that it's going to cause diabetes or make you gain weight. It just doesn't work that way. So mind you, it might irritate your skin, but it's not going to make you gain weight. Another example, because, you know, I love examples. Alcohol is another toxin. It's a liver toxin. It can cause liver damage. But it doesn't mean that when you wipe your nails with alcohol once a week or even every day before a polish application, that that's going to make you drunk or cause liver disease, right? Another toxin that many people know about. Botox is a toxin. It's a neurotoxin. But it's well, deemed safe when even injected into our bodies in small amounts and to paralyze muscle and it actually apparently helps with migraines so before you get concerned when you read these articles just think about this this one has the fluorescent brightener by the way this is a kind of a controversial in ingredient a little bit so i have heard one of the some of the viewers were mentioning that um the dior nail glow has been banned in korea because of some toxic chemicals that it contains so really they were talking about the fluorescent brightener they both have it uh, in the same amount, I would say, pretty much. And I read about it a little bit and mm, it doesn't seem like a very concerning ingredient. So I pulled up information on Canada.ca, Health Canada, and I'm going to provide the link, guys, if you want to if you want to see it. There has been some studies a long time ago on uh, on rats and it actually says that it's not carcinogenic but the rats were fed this product so there's a huge difference between you know eating something in large amounts and applying it on a dead nail so there has been there has been concerns with this ingredient that it potentially can cause skin irritations again but in this case the uh, the product is applied on the nails it's on applied on a dead nail it's not rubbed into the skin so again that's very very different because the amount of this ingredient is very very small so let's see how how much of it is in a nail polish so i looked up some chemical websites and they say it actually normally is contained in very very small amounts 0.05 percent or something like that and this this website says that the highest reported concentration fluorescent brightener 367 in nail polish was 0.3 so other than that it's much much lower so that actually brings me to another interesting thing anyway so i'll i'll leave you the link in the description box if you want to read up on it i don't know it's basically there there has been some concerns when it comes to environment issues but again in such small amount it's it doesn't seem to be a problem so the conclusion here it says considering all the available lines of evidence presented in the screaming screening screaming screening assessment there is a low risk of harm to the environment from that fluorescent brightener uh, and it's not entering the environment in a quantity or concentration or under conditions that have or may have an immediate or long-term harmful effect to the environment or its biological diversity and blah, blah, blah. So I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's, it's a big concern. So here's the article that I pulled out. Basically, they were just saying that they had concerns that it can, some brighteners can cause allergic reactions when in contact with skin, depending on the individual. But it doesn't really say it's with it's with this one. Some scientists categorize some types of fluorescent brighteners as carcinogens, according to industry officials. Yes, but OK, it doesn't say that this one could be a carcinogen in the amount that it's used in the in the nail polish. Right. OK, so. I would not be that uh, concerned. So here's the chemical uh, websites that I came across and it tells you how much of this product is usually used in plastic. So they say item of plastic or resin, the general use quantity is 0 0.01. 
to 0.05. So 10 to 50 grams for every 100 kilograms of plastic raw materials. And also it says if it's in the clear, if the agent is applied to the transparent plastic film, the recommended quantity is one to 10, which is even less, right? So I wouldn't be, um, it's a very small amount. But that brings me to another, another interesting thing. So another ingredient, the next ingredient here underneath is the sweet almond oil. So I'm just kind of wondering if this is 0.05%, how much of the, the sweet almond oil is in a product? Tiny, tiny, tiny amount. So in a bottle, it's probably, I was trying to do the math and it's just very confusing. So it's probably like one tenth of a drop in a, probably less in a nail polish bottle, right? So I'm just wondering if this is even effective in a nail polish in such small amounts, considering that you're using it maybe once a week, I think it would be much more effective for the sweet almond oil to be applied 100% a drop after each time you wash your hands, right? The way I recommend it. So I think when oils are also great when they're used on a regular basis after each hand wash, preferably, and they do make a difference, but not in such microscopic amounts, I think. Anyway, so next ingredient would be the, the Red Seven Lake, which this one can stain the nails sometimes, like an orangey color. So, but a lot of the polishes have it. This one, on the other hand, has that Red Seven Lake on the very bottom. By the way, it's not only that Red Seven Lake that can cause yellowing, but also the nitrocellulose here. And I'm going to link a very important article written by a chemist a PhD chemist, and she explains why she thinks nitrocellulose can yellow and possibly contribute to the surface damage of the nails. And the link is going to be in the description box. All right, so this one has it higher, which means that it's going to be a little bit more red. Then it has this, I guess it's a another film forming or something. So this has the same ingredient this one is a viscosity controlling this one has it as well and then next it has the peony um flower extract and i looked it up uh, i mean i didn't really spend a whole day looking for different maybe studies showing how effective probably in such small amounts of this extract flower extract would be on the topically on the nail i couldn't find anything so i don't know i guess it just sounds really nice because peonies are beautiful flowers and i don't know Again, I'm not a chemist. I'm just curious and I look and I like looking things up. So I wasn't able to find anything. But if you know a little bit more about it, then please let me know in the comment section. I'm going to pin the pin the comment. All right. So the next one, the sucrose acetate, that is an emulsifier. So it just keeps everything together and it has citric acid, which would be controlling the pH. And this one also has this uh, citric acid and also then the red seven lake which is the the colorant is the very last ingredient so my question to you is do you think this is from looking at the ingredients like a much better formula i don't know um i don't think personally i really don't think that this amount of sweet almond oil and the peony uh, flower extract in such tiny amounts where i couldn't find any like really mm, substantial benefits that it would be any better than the original formula mind you the ingredient list is not everything sometimes the way the chemicals are mixed together how they're how they're put together it makes for a better, sometimes longer lasting formula, much better application, quicker drying. I don't know. So it's the ingredients is not everything for sure. But let's look how the product lasted on me and how it looked after a week, because I think you're going to be surprised. OK, so this is how the, the my nails looked. So this was this hand, which was the original formula. So. What I did is I filmed the nails under a UV lamp. You know, I have that Melody Susie lamp that it has a regular light and then you click and it has switches to UV. 
it's usually used not to cure the gels, but to set the gels, so to, to flash cure it, right? I don't really use it for that, but it's pretty cool because you can see where the polish, um, where the polish still is and where it rubbed off. So let's play it. So you can see that it rubbed off here, obviously, because I use, you know, these, these areas are used a little bit more, but other than that, this is a week later. It lasted quite well. The thumb as well. And now let's look at the other hand. Check it out. So you can see that, sorry guys, it's completely gone here. And I noticed that after a few days. So now this is my right hand. I had a week off from clients, so I wasn't working on clients. So this is not because my nails were exposed to any alcohol or any acetone. Yes, I do a little bit more with my right hand, but I don't remember polishes lasting that much less on my right hand. So the next thing that I'm going to do is to switch <laughs> and wear the original formula just on my right hand and then the new formula on the left hand and we'll see if you guys are curious because you know what i don't think the the old one is still available it could be still available in some other areas but my gut feeling tells me if you still can get the old formula i would get it so i have to work with this a little bit more in order to to kind of make up my mind and to to figure out if I'm going to still recommend it, if I'm still going to love it or not. So this makes me a little sad because I really, really, really love the product. And if this truly doesn't last as long, because the Dior Nail Glow by itself, it doesn't last very long either. I would say they both kind of faded about after two, two days. So first, the first couple of days, it's a little bit... Br a little bit brighter so when you go outside the nails look a little bit tiny bit bluish so the reason why I like the Dior Nail Glow is because it doesn't really look as blue as obviously you see here it it just it makes the nails brighter a lot of the other brighteners they really make the nails look really really blue and a lot of my clients don't like it for some people even this is a little bit too much the Dior is a little bit too much but the Dior after I would say two days or something, it just looks like a normal clear nail polish. It just tiny, tiny bit brightens the nails. So both of them, they behaved the same. So it's not like one of them was brighter longer or anything like that, or one of them yellowed, it didn't yellow. In one coat, it looks like a pretty, like a clear nail polish. Both of them looked the same. I really wouldn't be able to tell the difference if one of them was more pink or, or not. You could kind of maybe see the difference, but if I was not, if I didn't know which one was which, I don't think I would be able to tell the difference. So the only difference is the, the wear that I'm concerned about. So if one of you guys already has the product and if you were able to test it, please let us know in the comment section what your experience uh, is with, with the product. So this is it about the Dior Nail Glow. And if you want to see another test, of me wearing the new one on my left ha hand and the other one on the right hand, please let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much guys for watching. Bye.